My brothers and sisters in Christ, in today's gospel, we hear the story of this interaction between a centurion and Jesus, one that is is very, in, in a lot of ways, shocking, even if it doesn't strike us that way at, at first glance. The words of the centurion, who, as he comes, you know, as he uh, invites Jesus, and presumably, we're not told, but, uh, you know, the, the centurion likely is not of the, the Jewish faith. He's likely a Gentile. And yet, he invites, uh, you know, he, he needs this, this miraculous healing and invites Jesus. And this, in of itself, is unremarkable. We see throughout the Gospels, people recognizing or hearing about the miracles Jesus does, wants them. Even those who are, you know, both Jews and Gentiles alike seek out Jesus to, to do a miracle for them. And yet, it's not the seeking out of a miracle here that's incredible, but it's the understanding of the centurion. And this is what so moves Jesus. The centurion recognizes the authority of Jesus. Many other people just see it in terms of the power. They see Jesus like, like a magician. You know, as a faith healer, someone he can, we can do it, and somehow we don't know how it works, but he's able to heal people or cast out demons. And yet the same people who see the miracles won't listen to the teachings or won't accept them. The centurion, on the other hand, doesn't have any rooting necessarily in Judaism, but he recognizes that Jesus could not do what he does without authority. He takes his own experience as a centurion, as a military commander, and the way that the power of his orders, that his orders, in a sense, make things happen, that people respond to it. And so he sees in Jesus an authority, not just a power, an authority. And this is what leads Jesus to say, not even in Israel have I found such faith. The centurion isn't just seeing a miracle worker, but he's seeing someone whose orders carry power. The one who sp says the word and it's affected. If he wills someone to be healed, they are healed. And so in this, he recognizes something of where Jesus comes from. And this is so important. And this is the reason why the words of the centurion carry over into the celebration of the mass every time. What are the words right before we receive communion, right before the priest consumes the blessed sacrament at every Mass? Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Based on the words of this centurion, only say the word and my servant shall be healed. He knows that Jesus nearly needs to say it, and his authority carries power. He's not a miracle worker, he's not a magician, but he has the authority to do and to make as he wills. What powerful faith indeed. A powerful faith that apparently was lost on many around, but was not lost on Jesus. And so, my brothers and sisters, when we offer our needs and our prayer intentions to Jesus, May we do so in recognition of that authority, not just of power, not just in hope when we ask for something, not like the sense someone would in a wishing well or rubbing, you know, looking for the, the genie in the lamp to grant a wish, but to realize that Jesus is so much more. Jesus has the authority. He has dominion over all. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May we have the faith like the centurion so that we may know that wholeness. May God bless you all.